This is Ibo Area TV. Concerning Nandi Kano has been asked why he ran away and abandoned his followers when things get hotter. Here's his reply. Nnamdi Kano explains why he ran away from Nigeria and abandoned his followers. The leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB Mazen Nnamdi Kano, has finally responded to a criticism of running away during the 2017 military invasion of his compound in Afaraibeku Umwahia Abia State by the Nigerian army and allegation of abandoning his followers in the country. It, it could be recalled that Kano left the country after the army invaded his home on September 14, 2017, during the Operation Exercise codenamed Operation Python Dance 2. Following the development, Kano letter resurfaced a few months ago in Israel, which set controversies as some Nigerians opined that since Kano is the leader of IPOB, he should have faced the army rather than running away. Kano reacting during his live radio broadcast from London on Saturday said he ran away because he did not have any weapon to face armed military men who stormed his house. According to him, he fled to Israel because it is the safest place for him to stay alive and achieve Biafra Republic. Kano said, I want to ask those that criticize me about what they would have done if they were in such condition. Did you know that Nelson Mandela ran to Nigeria for safety during his time? I ran away because Jubril Buhari sent the military to my house to call and kill me, and they expected me to stay and confront them. I'm unarmed, just as IPOB members are unarmed group. No one in Nigeria has done what I have done. I came home and I confronted the army. I went to their court. I was unlawfully detained. I went home, conducted a rally, and they sent their army to come and kill me. Nyamodo, Okeze Bazo, Obiano and Omahe were the ones that signed and brought the army to kill me. Yes, I fled to Israel because it is the safest place for me and I needed to stay alive and achieve Biafra Republic. Tell those who said that I ran away to read their history book, they will find out that all the popular human rights activists, both dead and alive, run away when it's the best time to. Uh, the high pop leader just gave you reasons. Now, we, let's look into this. A lot of people said he would have stayed and fought the army. I don't think it's a wise decision. First of all, you must realize the army are armed groups. They operate with weapons. They don't go unarmed when carrying out their missions. So I don't know why he should stay and fight them. So I wonder why people keep on taunting the IPOB people that their leader ran away. On such a situation, are you expected to stay? Well, in this condition, that in this situation, that IPOB has never been an armed organization. The best thing is to abscond. I think this question has been finally put to rest. We would like to do a fact check. How true is Nam Dekano's claim? Article is from Cameroon. In his recent broadcasts, uh, Nani Kanu claimed that uh, Atiku Abubakar, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, is not originally in Nigeria. This was how he presented it. He said, do you know that Atiku Abubakar is from Cameroon? His area of Adamawa was in Cameroon. He said, the claim by the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra has generated a buzz, especially on the social media. But how true is that claim by Mr. Kano? Going by history, he is in fact not entirely wrong in his assertion. Now let's go to Jeddah history. I think Abubakar is from Jeddah town in Adamawa state of Nigeria. However, Jada used to be in Ghana local government area in Adamawa. Ghana is regarded as the mother of the whole Chamba tribe. This area was never part of Nigeria legally until the February 1961 plebiscite. That's a referendum where the people of the then Northern Cameroon voted to join Nigeria. The area had been entrusted to Britain by a League of Nations mandate in 1919 and later as trust territory. 
by the United Nations in 1946, according to an article published on My Cultural Base. A prophecy was held in British Cameroon to determine whether the people preferred to stay in Cameroon or align with Nigeria. While Northern Cameroon preferred a union with Nigeria, Southern Cameroon chose alignment with the mother country. On June 1, 1961, Northern Cameroon became part of Nigeria, and on October 1, 1961, too, the Southern Territory dissolved into Cameroon. Ghana, which incorporates Atiku's birthplace of Jeddah, was the headquarter of British Cameroon, but following the Prebiside joined Nigeria. Though Mr. Kano is correct about the historical origin of Articles Jada, it is however instructive to note that when Mr. Abubakar was on November 25th, 1946, born to a Fulani trader and father, farmer Garba Abubakar, Jada village and other parts of Chamba land in the northern Cameroon were still known as British Cameroons. With the defeat of Germany in World War I, Cameroon, Cameroon, that is spelling as a then, K-A-M-E-R-U-N, became a League of Nations mandate territory and was split into French Cameroons and British Cameroons in 1919. While France integrated the economy of their part of Cameroon with that of France, the British administered theirs from neighboring Nigeria, making Articles Jeddah a British franchise. Aside from this historical twist, the fact, however, remains that the PDP presidential candidate is legally a Nigerian as Jeddah became a full Nigerian territory after the plebiscite 59 years ago. So I think the reason the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra had to mention this or talk about it was he's trying to call for a referendum that it should allow a people to decide where to belong by a referendum. It mustn't match people together like the British and the French did. You allow them to choose by themselves where they will belong. I think that is why he cited Atiku's case, the Jeddah, uh, the, the little history. So he was right, though right now that area belongs to Nigeria. I think he was asking for uh, all we beer friends, Southeast Nigeria, to be given an opportunity to, through a plebiscite, to choose where we belong. I think that is the main reason he mentioned that story about Atiku, bad place. Remain indoors during presidential polls, IPOB orders members. The indigenous people of Bafra, IPOB, has urged its members and supporters of calls for restoration and realization of the sovereign state of Bafra to sit indoors on February 16th slated for presidential and national assembly election in Nigeria. According to the Pro Biafra Group, February 16th has marked out as a day for Biafra referendum in Biafra land. In a statement by Comrade Mapawa for the Publicity Secretary of the group, IPOB stated that any person or persons who ventured out on that day will be seen as supporting the continuous suffering, kidnapping, abduction, killing, massacre, and total marginalization of the Biafran people. The statement reads, February 16, 2019 is a rare and golden opportunity to make an everlasting impression on the war stage that we, dear friends, are prepared to sacrifice everything sacrificeable, including the position of the vice presidential, to prove to humanity that we value our freedom more than earthly or material consideration. Our quest for Biafra has gone beyond the point of no return. In order to leave us free men on the guard in the new Republic of Biafra, we must not only stay indoors on the 16th February 2019, we must ensure that Biafra land is completely locked down. Anybody or family found outside on election day will perpetually suffer the ignominy of being labeled a traitor, a burden that family will bear for eternity. We are mindful that Nigeria is where ethnic nationalities are held down in bondage in an unworkable, artificially created purgatory. IPOB added, it doesn't matter who you are or what position you think you occupy in society. Setting foot outside your door on February 16th for Nigeria election 
will be validated, repeated, or refused by Federal Government of Nigeria to cite any capital projects in Biafra land. You will be the reason why the APC government had the temerity to bring Operation Python Dance to a land whereas Fulani headsmen who are busy slaughtering innocent souls are given preferential treatment and army protection. Stepping outside on the 16th of February mean that Enugu Onesha Expressway, Enugu Iwasha Expressway, and Second Niger Bridge will never be built. You will be the reason why all seaports and airports in Bafra land will never function. You will be the reason why high cut of mark discriminates against our gifted children. Why not and kids make it to Unity Schools with little or no score at all. This was IPOB's statement. They have voiced their own reasons why uh, Biafrans should not participate in the coming 2019 February election. These are their reasons for not participating. Now we we'll move on. To the, the Nigerian government is aware of this. Here is their own move to stop IPOB. Elections. Buratai orders clamp down on IPOB, Southeast groups. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Toku Buratai, on Monday said the indigenous people of Biafra and splinter groups in Southeast were threatening to disrupt the 2019 general elections. He therefore ordered the General Officer Commanding and Formation Commanders in the Southeast to clamp down on the activities of the group. Buratai said the military had information that unpatriotic groups headed by foreign conspirators were planning to scuttle the conduct of the 2019 general elections, warning that the military would do decisively with any security breach. The Army Chief stated this in Abuja in his remarks at the Chief of Army Staff Operations Conference, a meeting which brought together the Army's APIS Administrative and Operational Commander nationwide. Protests said the activities of the of IPOB were gaining momentum and must therefore be stopped ahead of the general elections. He said, I have issued directives for Operation Safe Conduct of the 2019 general elections. The Army has produced a code of conduct handbook for personnel to guide them during the elections and copies have been distributed to all formations. The activities of the indigenous people of Bafra and their splinter groups in southeast part of the country is gaining momentum as the groups are threatening to disrupt the 2019 19 electoral process. The excesses must therefore be clamped down on immediately. The army is working closely with police and other security agencies to ensure an enabling environment for the citizens to exercise their civic rights. He, he added, our role in support of the nation's democracy cannot be overemphasized. Hence, this conference will provide us the opportunity to review the conduct of exercise EWK3 that is Operation Python Dance, before, during, and after the general elections. Thanks for listening to Igbo Area TV. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates. You can also visit our Facebook page and like the page. You can join our Facebook group, Igbo Area TV. God bless you and bye for now.